I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent 2024. And when we talk about something, modernizing data platforms, it sounds uh, very simple at face value, but in fact is very complicated. And we are here to break down how to take something that a lot of companies struggle with and make it simple and easy to deploy. Because we are joined now by Shiva Agniswaran, the group CEO and chairman for Data Switch Incorporated, as well as Karthik Viswanathan, the chief executive officer and president at Data Switch. Thank you gentlemen for being here today. Thank you for having us. Why are companies modernizing their data platforms? Modernizing the data platform has become inevitable. So if you look at uh, in the IT on data world, it was started actually like a traditional databases and then there is a data warehouse and then there are big data. Then there was a digital pivoting to the digital. Now we are seeing a Gen AI, right? So the, the, com the companies are actually should be uh, completely adapting to the Gen AI in the world. Now, whatever the basic required, right, in terms of the infrastructures, the technology, and then the data that we need to go, we need to be handled, actually they are not really ready for it, right? So for, for that, actually we are moving, the, the cust companies are moving actually from the on-premises to more adaptable cloud, and uh, moving actually from the uh, legacy technologies into the completely more modern technologies, as well as the data that we are getting is at least not like a structured way, we are getting a semi-structure, unstructure, and images, all this thing and all. So it should be also adaptable in that particular thing, right? So that's the main reason actually the uh, customers are, or companies are moving actually to the modern data platforms. When you talked about legacy platforms and the modernization as well as on-prem into the cloud, um, it really set me up for talking about the acceleration of this process. So I'm curious from your perspective, how can you help companies accelerate this in a way that allows them to really um, access their data completely through this transition? Yeah, when you talk about acceleration, uh, companies have to do two things, right? One is get the data out on the cloud, and the second is to get the surrounding processes and the workloads out on the cloud. Moving the data is probably the easier part. There is a lot of automation available. Data which also has that automation available, and at the click of a button, we can help move the data from on-prem to cloud. Having said that, how do you, uh, you know, uh, do the other part, right? The workloads. That is a more difficult one. So what we do is we have an automation that can actually uh, migrate the uh, workloads onto the cloud. So uh, if you look at you know, uh, the clients may have a lot of uh, databases on Oracle or, uh, you know, DB2 or Teradata and so on, right? And when you look at the modern platforms, we, we have AWS Redshift, we could have anything on the uh, Google platforms or, you know, you could have Snowflake, Databricks, everything. Now, what we have is an automation that actually does this, uh, you know, at the click of a button. Uh, it may not be 100% automated because this is we are essentially rewriting code in one language into another. So the, it takes some doing, right? So we work with our partners and we bring this to our customers. You talked about integration, migration, and also uh, one of the tenants, uh, you know, DS uh, democratization, if you will, DS democratize. Uh, these are very important. Um, tenants for you to be able to be successful in migrating your co in company's data. Can you give me a case study uh, so people can understand how this works in practicality? I believe uh, there was a food retailer and you've also worked in finance in a number of other areas, but just give me an example of how this actually works. Yeah, so for example, we worked with a large uh, stock exchange in uh, Europe who actually had to modernize their uh, Informatica based uh, ETL processes out onto the uh, modern you know, uh, tech stack on Metillion. So, what we did with them, we did it with another partner. So, through that partner, uh, what we did was, we took all the Informatica, uh, you know, workloads, and through automation, we converted them into Metillion. So, it is one thing to do script to script, right, which is database to database. So, that is probably a little more easier than doing an ETL tool to another ETL tool. So, when you do tool to tool, the metadata has to be extracted and then understood and then translated into the uh, target architecture. And as we, you know, look at these kind of modernization today, you know, a few years back, uh, 
uh, enterprises were modernizing uh, one on one that is lift and shift but today enterprises are moving to uh, you know thinking that as they modernize instead of doing lift and shift they are trying to reengineer uh, the entire code base not only the code base and the entire architecture itself right and that is where uh, you know we uh, help you know we are working with uh, multiple customers today and this is kind of the new trend that we are seeing in the industry that customers are trying to reengineer as they modernize so this is a you know very niche area that uh, you know we are able to support with automation so one of the the principle behind the reengineering understanding not only the data also on the data structures right so what we actually do in the part of the reengineering we reverse engineering the entire core create the metadata and then do the complete lineage right the traceability how the data is coming in into the data platform how it is going out right there may be many uh, hops and then the data actually bringing everything together and then create the lineage then the way they want to restructuring that can be done right that's where the key differentiation that we are bringing the partners and customers are leveraging the data switch data ds migrate actually for earning their uh, bringing their value on it it's fascinating to me because what you have described is a process that takes a company with a very specific need who is looking for this specific solution and this migration is incredibly complex and you've made it simple because you're doing all the heavy lifting that's what data switch is at its core um gentlemen what do you look forward to most here when you attend a conference like AWS reinvent so it's the you know networking here you know that is a uh, huge for us right we get to meet most of our partners so we work out of uh, primarily out of india right and here we get to meet all the uh, partners uh, uh, you know people who are based in the us and this is our target market anyways so we get to meet all of them and we get to meet our customers you know whoever is in the event and uh, you know we generally uh, uh, you know don't see them otherwise so it's great to be here and it's been a fantastic uh, couple of days so far so i know that we talked a lot about uh, different avenues that your company deploys to help these customers solve and to end but tell me a little bit about data citizen see if you look at data engineering is actually the core activity of the entire data so if you mean the data is moving from the real value of the data that are coming here from the data that's coming in and then bring in the insights right and on this if on this entire life cycle actually moving the data so the data engineering is the most complex and very hand dirty work right if you look at uh, data science or if you look at ai right the 60 to 70% of the work is coming on this uh, data engineering work right as i mentioned is more hand dirty work and very difficult it's required a highly technical uh, uh, know how and both right now with the gen ai coming in right so it may it may be more complex but it also make the life easy for the data engineer right so if you look at data for ai and dai for data right so now we make the data uh, make it available for ai and we also use the ai for the data that is exactly the data citizen is coming into the picture so where the data part of the data citizen we are enabling the citizen data engineering so make the any business analysis or data analyst or any 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 person who want to really play with the data or want to create insight using the capability actually and then get this uh, get the uh, engineering work actually is a just click of the button just drag and drop getting it the tool will generate the code on the technology of choice that we are making right maybe on databricks and maybe on snowflake and maybe on aws redshift or could be on google bigquery and then they are, they are making actually live vc for the data engineer right that is our objective that's why we are bringing it back so the end of the day the developer does not need to understand the technology to be able to generate the code right that is what the platform provides and also once all the metadata is captured in the product that's a thing if the customer decides to switch the technology say from snowflake to databricks or you know uh, snowflake to redshift for that matter that can be done automatically because the entire code is generated by the product and that really helps in you know uh, transitioning from one technology to another at a future point in time as well 
that then also sets the stage for why this conference is valuable because you get to talk to people about how they want to access their data while you're creating that solution. Like you said, they don't have to understand how it works, they just need to know that it does. Exactly. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Safe travels home and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Steph Strickland, you're watching GeekWire Studios.